Once again, it doesn't look like I filmed much of it. I, I've taken the plate you remember from earlier, cut it into small boards and made the second level of the shield out of it. And what's next? The next step is the background layer for the second level. I just cut oh yeah 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 just cut out a piece of sheet metal and so I would get some clean edges I used my hammer and the edge of the anvil to create this ridge here. doesn't fit. I spent quite some time thinking about how I would make the face on the shield. After a lot of contemplation I figured out that a technique called repoussé would probably be my best chance. The thing with that is it's something where Basically, you have to de dedicate a whole lot of time to be really good at it. So I will see what I can, what I can do with my limited skill set. I already drawn out some facial features on this guy. Yo, kind of an ugly dude. And on the right side, that's something called Chaser's Pitch. It basically looks like cow manure but you heat it up with a heat gun or torch whatever you feel like and then this stuff becomes relatively soft so you can put in the sheet metal thing and once that is done you let it cool a little bit so it becomes hard again and then you start hammering the back side With tools that ideally don't look like these, but this is all I have right now. I have some more tool steel to make more, because we all know I will need more at this point. And yeah, this is basically my first attempt. Let's see how this goes. The other day I went online to order a ball peen hammer to help with the face shape. And I ordered this thing. Now it's quite heavy and quite big. I could have realized that beforehand if I just had looked at the weight. But after some initial hammering away at it, I must say this thing works wonders. So now I will go on, give the, th the thing some more contour. I mean, he looks like he has the pox, but if it works, it works. You can already make out some features. There's this tiny spot in his right eye that was a misplaced hammer blow, but the rest looks... Man, he looks fucked up. Mr. Face guy is back into the pitch. Uh, it works a lot better now that I have more of this stuff. So the next step is to hammer out his nose. The chaser's pitch has gone cold again and it, as you can see it's all falling apart. The entire blob is even sliding around in the bowl, but I will try to get the chin done and then we can take it out and see what it looks like. Hmm. 
Should be good enough. Let's see. Bro, what the fuck? I mean, yeah, maybe. This eye needs to come up a little. But overall, also there would be a whole lot of polishing involved, but it's not as bad as it could have been. I have to contemplate if I will turn him around again and maybe bring out the upper lip a bit more, but overall I think he looks quite neat. Go and unshackle my corporeal flesh, trapped in the sewer jail below the capital. I can kill you and defile your corpse, then the pox will truly be your own. I decided to give the upper lip a bit more height. I wanna... Well, you can see it a little bit. I'm not happy with this fool. Now I will go on and sand this entire thing. Do you remember this guy? Turns out he is actually quite thin-skinned, quite literally. So yeah, during the polishing, I would like to call it, I polished some spots so thin that there are now basically holes. And to solve this problem, I did something which a lot of professionals do and I basically never do. I just did the whole thing again, so. This is the new guy, uh, I basically just touched him with the rotary thingy just to remove the rest of the chaser's pitch and he already looks much more finished than the other guy. Uh, this might trick the eye a little bit because of the sunlight, it might look like the other one was shinier but that was basically masking all the problematic parts. So yeah, uh, I think he looks much friendlier. Which is a bad thing, because the mask kind of looks super pissed. Ah, doesn't matter, he's the new guy and he will stay. Oh yeah, I also forgot to tell you what I even did, so... Uh, this dude is made from... 0.5 millimeter steel and this one there's my hand this one's made from 0.75 millimeter steel that was so much easier than the last one I just used a little bit of scotch bright to polish everything up and now the face is done look at him he's beautiful Well, in an art, from an artistic standpoint, I guess, anyways. At the moment I am drilling holes through the sheet metal in the shield so that I can attach the face to the wood via some screws 
just in case that the face, for example, the nose catches on anything, this thing doesn't get torn off and takes all the sheet metal that is stuck to it with it. Okay, so the theory for this is quite simple. I will use some old two component glue I found lying around to get the lower end stuck to the face. This will give me a little bit of time to adjust the exact position of the thing. And the rest, since it's quite bendable, I will just use tiny portions with the fast binding glue. Uh, do you call it seconds glue? Probably not. Never heard that before. Um, yeah, uh, let's see how that goes. Now the upper part is clamped with some clamps to glue to the shield overnight. I will do the lower half of the entire thing basically from down here tomorrow and when that is done I can construct the last piece of rim around here and after that it's basically just a whole lot more of exactly this cutting out some sheet metal and sticking it to the shield this up to this line is basically the top part of the entire thing like what you can see here before this cut. This piece here at the top will be cut out so I get a nice fit with the rest of the shield. And this curvature down here, which I hope you can make out, is so that I get the shape that I want on the shield. Also it will be cut down here almost all the way through and then I will take out a triangular piece so I can bend this down to get the basically the exact same thing you can see on this one. You might be wondering where I got that angle from. I basically just used a piece of paper, put it onto the shield, folded it, took the, well basically folded this piece over, and then took this angle. It's not 100% accurate, but it's good enough that with some minor touch-ups I can get to the angle that I want. Now, onto the bending step. This is the step that took by far the longest on the first piece.
Now with this rim screwed into position, I believe that is the last piece of real metalwork on the shield. The last step is to add a whole lot of sheet metal decorative stuff to the shield, but I believe I won't film too much of that, since it's basically what you saw with this inner piece here. Now for those ornamental pieces that get placed into the blade, I contemplated long and hard what I could do to make those since they are basically steel flower motifs on a brass background or a gold background if you are fancy but I'm not. And I thought about setting stuff in or basically like every piece of this steel flower would be a piece of jewelry. Then you could try to get the brass around it to hold it in place but that is or would probably be more work than the entire rest of the project. So my plan is to make these things use, using the repousing technique, uh, getting the, basically the entire thing out and then brazing the entire thing and then polishing back only the flower part so we have a silvery shiny top and a brassy background. So basically how this works, I will heat up the metal until it's well hot, then I'll scrub it off with the brass brush and that will transfer the brass to the steel. feel like you can make it out now a little bit, the color difference. I will basically now have to fit all those to the blade and then I will glue them on. It's kind of crazy I took the paper template that I used to mark out the inlay piece directly from this shape and now you can maybe make out the scrape lines that define the outer perimeter of the now existing piece. Yoink. Quite a lot of difference and I have no idea where that came from. My guess would be from the repousing process. Somewhere in there it's changed shape dramatically. Here I am simply taking the brass wire and bending it into shape so that it fits into the groove. And now to the part that stresses me out the most with those highly decorated blades. I have to put the blade bevel or, or edge or at what, at what point becomes a bevel and edge or is it the same? Yeah, so I will not finally sharpen this thing, but I will get it down to a point where I can sharpen it with hand tools. And if the... Can you see it? No, you can't. 
if the interleaf flap hat uh, tears out those golden stripes while trying that, I might have a nervous breakdown. Let's see! Okay, what I learned from this, the thing in the drill is not strong enough to take down the edge real fast. But it's definitely uh, strong enough to tear out all those decorative elements, so... Huh... Maybe I will just do everything with hand tools for those indentations here. I would have to do that anyways. Remember earlier when I told you that this blade is making me lose my sanity? I just started out with a file and was around here pretty proud about myself. Proud of myself for how well it went. And around here I realized that the blade is hardened. Yep. It's, it has gone that far. Yo. Sadly, this video is getting a bit too long, so I will make a cut here. If you want to watch me continue this project, make sure to watch the next episode. There will be a link to a playlist somewhere on this screen right now. If not all of the parts of the build are in the playlist yet, I will upload them over the course of the next days and weeks.